Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udzu billahi min syururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla wa may yudlil fala hadiyalah asyhadu alla ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarikalah wa asyhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh one more time assalamu alaikum Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Um, obviously, I'm not Sheikh Hussein Yi. Right? If you're expecting him, I'm sorry. I have to apologize first. Uh, I'm his student. I'm also a revert, just like some of you here, I guess. Any revert here? No revert. MashaAllah. Okay, I'm a revert of uh, 16 years. 16 years, alhamdulillah. Um, I've been studying here also. Um, my name is Adam. Uh, I'm a Chinese, Adam Wu. Um, so here, I'm here to share some of my knowledge that I've learned. <coughs> um, how are you? How's everyone? Alhamdulillah. Um, Alhamdulillah, um, we are back online physical class now. Alhamdulillah, it's been a while we do physical class. We've been doing a lot of online classes. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we praise to Allah who has allowed us to enter one of the sacred months. If you don't know, actually we are currently in one of the sacred months in Islam. How many sacred months in a year? Anyone knows? In Islam, how many sacred months in a year? There are, mashallah, four. Four months. There are four months, four sacred months out of the 12 months. Anyone knows what are the four months? Muharram, mashallah. Anyone else? I just give you an answer right now. Dor Qaeda, right? Anyone? I give you tips. The Prophet ﷺ said there are three consecutive and then one standalone. Uh, Muharram, Dor Qaeda, so what's in between? <laughs> That's the Dor Hijjah. Yes, so the next month is also sacred month. So starting now, uh, this month, is the first of the three consecutive sacred months. So we have Dor Qaeda, next month Dor Hijjah, and then next month Muharram. So 11, 12, and 1. And then the standalone is, sorry, some say Ramadan. Anyone else? No different opinion. Or oh, Ramadan. <laughs> No, Ramadan is not. Ramadan is not sacred months. Rajab, the seventh month of Rajab. Yeah. So we have four sacred months. So Alhamdulillah. So we are currently in the sacred months. Sacred months, or in Arabic we call it the haram months. Haram. The forbidden months. Why? Because the sin committed in these four months is not, is unlike the sin committed in the non-haram months. So it is a reminder for all of us to stay away from sinful acts in these four sacred months. Yeah. So, and also increase our ibadah, increase to do more, more good deeds, do more thing, uh, good deeds. Seeking knowledge is one of them, alhamdulillah. The fact that you are here today is uh, one of the rewarding deeds. And indeed, seeking knowledge is very difficult. Yeah, very difficult. If you, if you have been a student of knowledge, you will know it is a very difficult journey. We all know we have gone through. You start with kindergarten, then you go to primary school, then you go to secondary school, then you have the, the lower secondary, then the higher secondary, then you go to 
university, and then you do your bachelor, you do your master, you do your PhD. Oh, subhanallah, right? So it's a long journey, never-ending journey. And what requires in the seeking the, the journey as a student of knowledge is one thing that you really need to have, which is anyone. You have to be steadfast. Istikoma, mashallah, the brother said, istikoma. Maybe some of you don't understand what istikoma is. It means you have to be steadfast. Because as a student of knowledge, oh, this is something that I'm sure you heard a lot of people. Study halfway, ala, tana. Give up already. Yes. To be steadfast in the journey of seeking knowledge. So here you are, alhamdulillah. So the next week, we want to see you again. Every week, must come. I've been teaching, so it's, it's, it's tough to see a student continuously attend classes. Yeah. <laughs> After a few months, eh? where is the student? Somewhere else already. Maybe one with Tama already. Uh, so it's tough. <laughs> you laugh, but let's see. After three months. <laughs> because inshallah, we want some of you sit here after this. Right? So, learn to teach. I was told by my sheikh. He said, when you learn Adam, you must set the intention to learn to teach. Not to teach like this, he said. Not to teach that you will have your own class after that. No. He said, you must learn to teach yourself. That's number one. You must learn how to teach yourself. Because if you cannot teach yourself, what is the purpose of learning? In Islam, we don't learn for fun. We learn to practice, to become a better person, to change the world. How do we change the world? Change yourself first. If you can change yourself, how many of us here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of us. All of us today, after this one hour class, you go home and you practice one thing that you learned today, for example. You become better. When all of us here become better, 10 of us become better, the society become better. You see how you change society? That's how you change. What if this brother act two things? What if this brother act 10 things? We are talking about one, honey. I'm sure you can do one, right? If you can do 10, mashallah. And every week you come and you practice one, 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 one. You multiply after one year. Imagine what will become what you will become. And imagine what other people will become. And imagine what the society will become. That's how we change. So seeking knowledge is very important. And very highly rewarding. But learn to teach. You must know how to convince yourself to practice what you have learned. And not just learn and then that's it, go home. This knowledge can go against you. It can go for you, but it can go against you. So don't make the knowledge go against you on the day of judgment. That you have known, you know about this, but you didn't act upon it. So coming back to these four sacred months. So one of the highly recommended or highly praiseworthy rituals that we can do, especially next month, during the Hijjah, is... Korban, sacrifice. For those who don't know, sacrifice. Sacrifice for the sake of Allah. So that's the today's topic. We're going to talk about what is korban. What do we do? One of the most highly recommended things. Okay? But before that, I want to talk about what do you mean by most highly recommended? In Islam, the ruling of the do's and the don'ts, right? The in our deeds, or what we call the fiqh, right? The ruling. There are how many categories? Anyone knows? How many categories? Five categories. We have five categories of all the deeds that we do. It starts with the easy one first. Let's hope that we have ink. Bismillah. We start with the first one.
the rulings in Islam? Number one, anyone knows? Anyone? We categorize it as wajib. Or in English we call it obligatory. Means what? You must do. If you don't do, if you don't do, what happen? You're sinful, right? You're sinful. Sinful means what? You are you are asking for punishment. Huh? Okay, I don't want to say you will definitely be punished because Allah may forgive you, but you're asking for punishment. Come on, punish me. Like that. Huh? Wajib. Any other different color? No color. Anyone can give me some examples? This is the easy one. Sorry? Five times prayer. Very good. The five times prayer. The five times salah. What else? Sorry? Fasting, fasting in the month of Ramadan. Well, we have this specific, right? Because salah, there's so many salah. We're talking about the five times daily prayer. Fasting in the month of Ramadan. What else? Give three in Allah. Huh? Pay the zakat. Very good. So basically, all the five pillars of Islam is wajib, going for hajj. We have the second category, but I will skip second and third and fourth. We go to the fifth one first. Because this will be the opposite of wajib is haram, mashallah. Haram means prohibited. Give me an example. Don't say, don't pray. La. Oh, okay, la. don't fast. Don't. <laughs> Give me an example. Prohibited. No. The famous one. Eat pork. Cannot eat pork. Eat pork. <laughs> Haram to eat pork. We said eat pork. What else? Riba, mashallah. Riba for those who don't know, interest. We call it interest or usury. The bank interest, huh? The bank. You pinjam satus. You ask 120 ringgit balik. The 20 ringgit, haram. What else? Sorry? Alcohol. Sorry? Khamar. Alcoholic drinks. Okay. Alcoholic drinks. Like what? Beer. Wine. Liquor. Or oh, haram. One give one more. Haram, we are very good. Give one more. <laughs> The one, okay. Very, very difficult. Okay, now let's talk about these three. After wajib, we have what we call mustahab. Mustahab. Or what we call recommended. Recommended means what? It means it's not wajib upon to do it. But if you can do it, wow, very good. Highly rewarding. But you don't have to do it. Uh, but it's highly encouraged if you can do it. Yeah. Why? Because the five times prayer, yes, is wajib. This is the bare minimum we have to do. There are some people, they want to do more. Not enough, lah, five times. Ah, this is when it comes. The mustahab, the recommended one. And this is why we have Give example. Anyone? Anyone? Give example. Sorry? Korban is one way. Very good. Uh, he, he skipped my lecture. <laughs> uh, korban. Uh, this is the topic we want to talk about. Yes, the korban. Is This is the recommended one. Yes. But beside korban, anything, anything anyone else can give. So beside the five times prayer, there are 
solah nafil. This is what we call the recommended, recommended prayers. Like what? Before you pray, subuh prayer. You pray two rakat first. Before you pray. After zohor, for example, there is another two rakat you can do. Fasting, same. Outside of month of Ramadan, you can fast Monday and Thursday. Outside month of Ramadan. You can fast 13, 14, 15 of the month. We, we call Yawmul Bid, the white days. White days, why? Because the moon is full moon. Very bright. You can also fast. What else? You can, instead of pay zakat, not enough, I want to pay more. You can give sedekah if you want. Charity. These are all recommended things to do. Smiling to your brother. Recommendation. Smile. Not, bro not, not woman, brother. Ah. Right? Uh, help the blind to cross the road. Recommended. Is it wajib? No. You can just walk away. But highly recommended. When you cook, cook a little bit more. Give some to your neighbor. Highly recommended. Okay? The opposite of this is what? Makru. Very good. We call makru. Or in English we call dislike. Dislike. It's not haram, but it's something not encouraged to do. This is encouraged to do. This is not encouraged to do. But if you do it, it's okay. It's not sinful. But it's highly not to do it. Like what? Example. Ah, this one is tough. Huh? Sorry? Divorce. Um, no, not really. Ah. Anyone else? Oh, tough. Huh? This one. Immediately silent. Sorry? Wasting food is haram. You cannot waste food. Ah. <laughs> Dislike. Huh? Sorry? 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 Cannot hear you. Huh? What? To take taps. Uh, no. That will be in this category. Ah. Come on. Come on. Okay, I'll give you one. I thought everyone would know this. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever eat garlic, don't go pray in the masjid. Wow. You, meaning you don't smell bad. Lah, huh? Smelling bad. Dislike. Muslim should smell good. But smell bad, is it haram? No, but not good. Lah. Have you ever prayed with someone next to you? He's really smelly one. You feel like jihad, right? Correct. Ah, it is. Prayer is jihad. That's why the uh, praying in Jumaah, you get more reward. Why? You have to deal with people like this. Mm. Smelling very bad. <laughs> you laugh, brother, but it's tough. <laughs> right? Hey, anything else? Cannot give it. Cannot. Okay. Homework for next week. Okay? Homework. Ah? I, homework. See who is the best student will do homework. Then the last one is what? This is what we call muba. Muba means permissible or halal. You can do this. It's not wajib. It's not recommended. It's not makru. It's not haram. It's permissible. You just do. You just do. It's okay. 
Like what? Oh, this one has a lot of example. Huh? <laughs> right, taking a debt, huh? You can you can have debt, pinjam do it. No problem, it's not haram, it's not makuk. You can take debts. Huh? Not paying back the debts is haram. Ah. <laughs> but you can engage in debts. But the pinjam do it boleh. Ah, boleh. Ah. Eat and drink. No, eat, eat. Ah. You drink, drink. Ah. What's the problem? Ah, as long as you eat halal, halal food, of course. Or eat supper, eat. Ah. Huh. There's no such thing as you must eat three meals a day. I eat seven meals a day. Bismillah. I don't eat noodle. I don't want to eat rice. It's okay. Muba. You can do whatever you want. As long as it's halal, uh, permissible. This one has no recommendation. There's no makru. No, no. Okay? Today, we want to talk about this one. Korban. Korban is mustahab. Re highly recommended. Highly recommended to perform korban. When? When should we do this? Anyone knows? Before we talk about what is korban. Korban is performed. I erase. Uh, can. Uh. No, there's no need to copy one. Uh, you just take picture. Uh. <laughs> the student's life is very different. Those days we have to salin. Uh. Cikgu, belum siap lagi. <laughs> now there's chichak. Finish. But you guys know about this already, right? So. Normally, teacher don't erase, right? <laughs> Wait, assign someone. <laughs> I have to write, I have to erase. Oh. That's why there's teachers there. <laughs> there's no student there. Right? <laughs> so what's Korban? Come on. Google, lah, quick. Huh? When do you perform Korban? Sorry? Let's talk about what is korban first. Huh? Korban is korban. Bahasa Melayu cakap korban. Saya memang korban. Korban untuk negara. Right? Any non-Malaysian here? Any non-Malaysian? You're non-Malaysian? You're not Malaysian? Oh, you don't understand Melayu? Understand also? Okay. You, you, don't, you don't understand? Sorry. I, did, I thought everyone Malaysian here. Okay, I will speak English or Chinese after this. <laughs> korban is offer sacrifice livestock. For the sake of Allah. Okay. During eight Adha. We have how many eight in Islam? Two. Very good. The first one. Ideal Fitri, we just passed, right? So we are going to into the second one is Adil Adha. This year, Malaysia a bit unique, if you notice. We celebrate three, three months of Raya. Oh, why? Shaban, Nur Qaeda, now we're still having open houses. Kan? We're going to move into Adil Adha already. Might as well. Eh? Ah, three months. Oh. <laughs> Raya, three months. MashaAllah. So, there are a few key words here we want to talk about. Sacrifice. Livestock. During Aidil Adha. Huh. This one, for the sake of Allah, is must, must be. Lah. We don't. So, these are the key things we want to talk about. 
right? When do we do it? That's the first one, when. You can start from the first Dorahidja, which is next month, until the last day is 13. 13 of Dorahidja. This is the time period. So you don't sacrifice here, but the sacrifice starts on the 10th, Hari Raya, specifically after Salah. Salah to Eid. Then we sacrifice. But the intention can start from first. Okay? Remember this because we're going to talk about this, the timing, why it's important. You can have the intention now, but you may not start paying, you know, for the... The sacrifice starts the sacrifice starts on the 10th after Salah to Eid. We sacrifice the livestock. The last day being 13th of the Hijjah before sunset. That's the last time. Meaning the end of Aidil uh, Adha. Aidil Adha, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right. It's a longer raya or longer eat than Aidil uh, Fitri. Aidil Fitri, after Salat, finish already. Livestock. What do you mean by livestock? So it has livestock category. What? Livestock, the most or the best camel. Next, cow. Next, chicken. No, sorry, what? Goat or sheep or oh, goat. One, two, three. Chicken, yeah, no, no. Chicken can, cannot. So these are the being um, slaughtered: camel, cow, sheep, or goat. Must be alive. That's why we call livestock. Must be alive. Dead cannot, cannot. Then you're not slaughtering any. Then you're not sacrificing, right? So it must be alive. And not only that. There are some conditions, right? There are some conditions. It cannot be chachat, you know, chachat, uh, disabled, must be healthy, okay? Healthy livestock. So this one, very expensive. This one, expensive. This one, affordable. So that's why these two can be shared. The Prophet said, you can share seven people. Camel also. This one cannot for one person. Too small to share. Right? So, you can, if you want to take a goat or a sheep, you take one person. Otherwise, you want to share cow also can. One cow, share seven people. Or one camel, share seven people. Okay, so that's how you share the portion. The meat, after you slaughter, highly recommended to distribute. Three parts. One third, go to yourself. One third, charity. One third, to whoever you want. Friends, neighbors. Understand, so far. This is highly recommended. But if you want to charity everything, can or not? Can. You want to give everything to friends? Can or not? Can. You want to take all of them? 
can or not? Can. I want to sell, can or not? Cannot. Cannot sell. Haram to sell. Hmm. But it is better to distribute in this manner because that's what the Prophet Sallallahu said. But you cannot sell it for money because it's sacrifice. Coming back to this, for the sake of Allah, right? So you don't sell it and make money. Okay, so that's how you distribute the meat. Any question? I see some confused faces. No? You want to do it yourself? Slaughter yourself? Can. Highly recommended. If not, at least be present and see your animal to be slaughtered. If still cannot, it's okay. Get someone else to slaughter for you. No problem. Okay? So, slaughter yourself. Best. Next, witness. Or else, hire someone else. Okay? So that's the what. Any other questions before we move on? No? Okay. Brother, you have a question. Ah, the brother asked a question. What is the difference between Korban and Akika? Have you ever heard of Akika? Anyone heard of Akika? No. Okay. Akika is the animal you slaughter when you have offspring, when you have a newborn. Okay, for the newborn. So you slaughter on behalf of the newborn. All right. So you have a boy, you slaughter two goat. If a girl, one goat. Yeah. Same thing, the distribution, you can do it like this. Or give it up, or take it, or also can. Uh. Mm, correct. Correct. Because Akika is only this. Yeah. Yeah. So if you uh, korban is that's when you have this in Malaysia this one uh, because there's no camera. So the bro the brother asked a very good question. So if I want to perform korban, which one should I choose? Because poster nowadays they put one goat. What is the price now? Uh? Eight hundred. Seven fifty. Ah, uh, seven fifty one goat. Or one portions of cow also about roughly that, eh? seven fifty eight hundred. So which one should I do? Uh, like it, like we say, the best is this, second is this, third is this. Yeah. So that's the hierarchy ranking. Uh, so if you can do this, you do this. If you cannot do this, otherwise you do this. You don't have to take the whole cow. If you can take one portion, you take one portion. Uh, no, uh, you, yes. Let's say, for example, you said, I want, only want to take one portion. Can. Yeah, up to you. It uh, depends on your aff afford affordability. Yeah. Okay. Brother asked a way ahead for your question, which is very good. When I perform a korban, can I have the intention to also perform for other people, for my family, for my parents? For yes, it is permitted. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam slaughter a goat for his whole family, yeah, for his whole family. for him and his whole family. He even slaughter a goat for his whole ummah, yeah. for people who who are not afford uh, cannot afford korban. So he he slaughter for everyone on behalf of everyone. So yes, it is, it is permissible to have the intention on behalf of someone else. Can. In fact, if you ask me, it is better. Because there are many people out there do not have chance to do it. Don't even have a chance to eat meat. Subhanallah. Can you imagine? In the whole year, 
there are many Muslims out there, poor Muslims. May Allah help all of us. Don't even have a chance to eat red meat. Okay? Don't even have a chance to eat cow or sheep throughout the year. The only time they can eat is when we perform korban for them. Yes, brother. Okay, the brother asked a very good question. Which one is more recommended? To do it in your own place or do it outside of your place or outside, even outside countries? The, the, the most rewarding or the most recommended is always do it at the place where there are a lot of needy people. All right? So I don't know your place. You could be living in a place where there are a lot of needy people. Then do it in your place. All right? Or maybe not in your place, but nearby. You know, like your taman is okay. Maybe outside of the taman, there's a lot of poor people. So maybe you want to do it there. Right? Or another state, for example. So it depends. Right? If you think my place, so more tato, tato, tansri, tansri, why I want to do it. <laughs> right? Everyone here is so rich already. Then you see the next taman also, there's some poor people, but there are a lot of people doing there. Right? So maybe you don't want to also. Then you see, maybe further, further. Or oh, even Cambodia, Tanzania, there are many, um, yeah, a lot of any, many Muslims countries where the Muslims are really poor. Really, really poor. Yeah. So it is always better to help those who, who are in need. Okay? Always in need. Because alhamdulillah, we have the means to do it. Like I say, not only they don't have the means to do it, they don't even have a chance to taste meat yeah, throughout the year. The only time they have a chance to eat meat is when we do korban for them. Then the meat will reach them. Yeah. And one cow, imagine, can feed many families and for many months. Seriously. Right? Very good questions. Okay, where am I now? <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the do's and the don'ts. When you want to do this, okay, there's do's and don'ts, okay? The, the, I would call it the not to do. When you want to perform korban, the Prophet ﷺ said, do not take anything from your skin. And number two, hair. Number three, Nails. So when you want to perform korban, make sure starting from first durhija until your animals are slaughtered, you don't cut your hair. Don't remove anything hair. Don't cut your nails. Don't peel any skin from whatever places. So these are the three not to do things. Until your animal are slaughtered. Your animal could be slaughtered after Salah. It could be on the 11, it could be on the 12, and it could be on the 13. You don't know. Until it is slaughtered, confirm to you that yes, your animal has been slaughtered. Then, only then, you can start cutting your hair and yeah. Okay? So these are the not to do. So coming back to the questions that the brother asked. What if I slaughter on behalf of my wife, my children, for example, my parents? Then the not to do doesn't applicable for them. Only applicable for you. Because you are slaughtering on behalf of them. But if they do it, they take their own sheep, they take their own portion, then the not to do applicable for them as well. Understand or I confuse you more? Understand, huh? Very good, huh? Sure? Okay. So if you do it overseas, this brother said, let's say I want to do it overseas, right? Make sure the organization who is doing it, tell them to inform you, right? Inform you when your animals are slaughtered. Then you can cut your nails and, okay? So ask them. Uh, ask them to take a video. Uh, today's very easy, uh, right? They, they video the slaughtering and then they send to you. 
uh, with your name some more. So it's very easy. So you know your animals are slaughtered. Then you can do this. Okay? So what's the wisdom? Anyone else? Anyone can tell me. What's the wisdom of doing this? This whole thing? Hmm? Okay, the brother said, to uh, it's a remembrance of Ismail's story. Anyone knows about the Ismail and Ibrahim story? The story of Ismail and Ibrahim, the father and son. Everyone knows, right? Where Ismail was um, commanded, or uh, Ibrahim was commanded to slaughter his son Ismail. Ibrahim dreamed about this. Allah commanded him to slaughter his son, Ismail. And he dreamed about it many, many times. So one day he asked Ismail, what do you think, my, my son, what do you think? I'm mean commanded to slaughter you. What do you think? What did the son say? Hmm? The son said, whatever Allah says, Bismillah, do it. So he lay down Ismail, he went to slaughter him, and then Allah turned him into a sheep. So he slaughtered a sheep. So this is to uh, reenact the whole story. But really what's the wisdom behind it? The first thing, the story, the story, not, not, not story, the event. I don't want to say story because story sounds like fake. It's not a fake news. Huh? This is a real, real event. The real event happen, what is, what is the wisdom behind this? This is a test for Ibrahim. What do you mean a test? It is a greatest test for a father to slaughter a son. Today, may Allah protect all of us. Allah forbid, if our children pass away before us, how would we ac accept this? Many people cannot accept this. It's a, it's a great test for many of us who cannot even do it. Right? We cannot accept. The fact that our children, we have to bury our own children. Correct or not? And we all know Ismail has only two sons. Ismail and Is Ishaq. And Ismail being one of his favorite sons, and Allah asked him to slaughter him. SubhanAllah. It's a very tough test. But he did it. So the first wisdom of this korban is to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obey the obedience to Allah. Obe obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we do Qurban, we must tell ourselves, from now on, I want to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's all about obedience. We do it because it is commanded to do. We love Allah more than anything else. Whatever he asks us to do, we do. And this is why Allah reminded us the blood will not reach him. The blood that you slaughter will not reach him. But your taqwa, your righteousness will reach him. Yeah. It's about obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's about following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Whatever he asks us to do, how he distributed, how the not to do when you want to do that, how all this is part of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah says, obey Allah and obey my Prophet. And the Prophet also told us, whoever, whoever obey me has obey Allah. So that's the first wisdom. The obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What other wisdom? To help the poor, remember? If you have travel outside Malaysia, Malaysian, I always say Malaysian, the Muslims in Malaysia, mashallah, we really we owe it to Allah. We have all the facilities. But if you have travel outside Malaysia, see the conditions of the Muslims out there, you will see many of them are in the state that I cannot even describe. Yeah. They are poor. Poor may not be the right word to describe them. Yeah. 
they want to practice Islam also cannot practice. We Malaysian, subhanallah. What are the things that we cannot do here, Malaysia? Right? Correct or not? All the five pillars of Islam. Yesterday I was just, I was just telling someone, my colleague, for all the five pillars of Islam in Malaysia, we can do it. Not only can do it, can do it publicly without have to hide ourselves. From Shahada to Hajj. You want to muscle Islam? Who anyone wants to declare Shahada, you can declare and then you can register yourself. Many countries out there, people who become Muslims, they cannot, they don't get their rights. They can only, you know, register in the masjid, that's all. Here in Malaysia, you're protected. You register, you die, you get to bury in the Muslim cemetery. You have the rights. Praying five times a day, we can make azan loudly. How many countries out there? Azans are not allowed to be proclaimed. Some use Tok, 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 that's all. Correct or not? Uh. Or your azan, just you know, without mic, that's all. We can program azan. Which building in Malaysia, you tell me, don't have surah? Uh. It's like a law, right? Unwritten law. You build a building, you must reserve a surah. I work in oil and gas. Even the platform, offshore platform, surah. We build surah for the Muslim to pray. And yet, we don't pray. How many Muslims pray five times a day in Malaysia? And yet, we don't pray. Shopping more, go. Shop all you want. There's a surah out there for you to pray. Buka lah, bosa. Iftar in the shopping mall. There is a, mas- there is a surah for you. Pay zakat. We have posat zakat. You can pay. Every state, I think, right, has pos- posat zakat. How many countries out there, Muslims, when they want to come to pay zakat, they don't know where to pay. They have to go and look for the poor people. They don't have center, center zakat. Not only that, Malaysian don't even have to pay a single tax, a single cent of tax. You can contra with your zakat. Call it or not. Yet we don't want to pay zakat. Skip zakat. Ramadan. We just finished Ramadan. How many times? Uh, if you have Ramadan in Malaysia, you see how the shops close. Huh? Oh, to respect the month of Ramadan. Buka puasa sama-sama, terawih. Hey. How many countries cannot do that? Hajj, we have Tabung Haji, one of the best Hajj organizer in the world, recognized by Saudi. You can put money in Tabung Haji, open an account, put your money there, and he will help you to generate more money. And when you get quota, you get you go to Hajj. Wow. How many countries out there cannot do that? If you have performed Hajj, you go and see. There are people who have to cook themselves and eat during Hajj. We, whew, Tabung Haji, Jemaah Malaysia, sit there and wait for the food to be served. And yet, we want to complain. Bila nak sampai ni, makanan belum sampai. When is the food coming? Huh? Not yet, no, why so late? But mashallah, Malaysia, seriously. So, second wisdom, to help the people, help the poor. Many poor people out there, you have no idea. You have no idea. Alhamdulillah, I have traveled many countries. I've seen in my own eyes the situation, the conditions of the Muslims. Seriously, they they don't have uh, they don't have that kind of um, luxury. I would say huh? these are the luxury things that we have. We eat red meat until we have high cholesterol and hypertension. Correct or not? First world problem. Uh, they don't they they don't have chance to eat. Yeah, seriously, the whole year maybe they eat chicken and then they see meat, they are very happy. So this is a second wisdom. I want to stop here already. The class, we have finished the time. So anyway, we have covered all the key points here. So it's highly recommended to do Qurban. And these are the wisdom. So if you can do it, mashallah, do it. Okay? If you can do it, of course. It is not wajib. We discussed about that. right? It is mustahab, recommended. If you have the means to do it, do. <coughs> 
Otherwise, it's okay. Try your best to do it. All the mustahab is, is not like, oh, not wajib, ah, then I don't do. No, mustahab means try your level best to do it. Ah, same thing as the makru. Try your level best not to do it. It's not like, oh, makru, ah, then I go do, lah, I go do. No. Right. So the mindset must change. Recommended means try your level best to do it. Find ways to do it. Oh, I don't have enough money. Oh, can I can I save here, save save, save some save some expenses here? You know, uh, maybe don't buy this, don't buy that, and then I will have enough to do one korban, for example. Okay. Any other questions before we wrap up? Any? Yes, brother. Very good questions. The brother asked, can I do it on behalf of those who have passed away? The answer is yes, you can do it. The Prophet Wasallam used to slaughter an animal uh, for him and for his whole family. And we know some of his family already passed away. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, sister. Can, no problem. You, you can have your own portion then you can have your intention to slaughter for anyone, for your own family, for example, also can. Right? Or it is sufficient for the husband to slaughter one for the whole family, also can. No problem. But like I say, if you have your own one, then this is applicable for you. Okay? Whoever wants to do it, then this is applicable for you. But if you are slaughtering for, on behalf of others, the, the others do not have to do this. Only you have to do this have to stay away from that, sorry. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Brother, yes. Brother, there's, there's one question from online. Okay. Okay, I'll read it to you. Sure. Okay, uh, the question from online is, um, can we uh, distribute the korba meat to not yet Muslims? Okay, the question is, uh, okay, can we distribute the food to the not yet Muslim? Can, no problem, no problem. But you have to be careful uh, because <laughs> these are the sacred animals to some of the not yet Muslims. <laughs> you give them cow, they're like, cow? I don't eat cow. <laughs> uh, I don't eat beef one. Uh, so maybe you want to ask first. Uh, ask first, do you eat beef? Uh, so no, okay. Because it happened to me before. I distribute some of them to my neighbors and then they're like, uh, I don't eat. I don't eat beef. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, anything? Anything else? <clears throat> okay. Thank you very much. Then we'll end the session. May Allah grant us understanding of the religion and grant us steadfastness in seeking knowledge, and most importantly, grant us the ability to obey Him. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika. Ashadu ala ilaha ila ant. Astaghfiruka wa